Australia, one of the most multicultural countries in the world, welcomes people from everywhere. We have gained this status for many reasons, with one of the main reasons being our interaction with the Asia Pacific region. Australia greatly involves itself in the global community so that we can make a mark on the world's future and help it move forward. We assist the global community in forms of aid, trade, sport, and tourism for the chance of a good future for our country and the nations all over the globe. This documentary will help you understand how involved Australia is in the global community specifically in the Asia-Pacific region. Let's take a look. Australia is located near Asia-Pacific neighbors such as China, Thailand, and Vietnam. Australia interacts mainly with ASEAN, also known as Association of Southeast Asian Nations, within the region which involves countries such as Singapore, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, and the Philippines. ASEAN aims to accelerate economic growth, social progress, and cultural development in the region, and also to promote regional peace and stability. Australia has a deep and long-standing relationship with ASEAN by covering cooperation in a range of areas such as security, culture, trade, education, and development. In relation to trade, Australia is involved with ASEAN in the largest free trade agreement we have signed. On the 27th of February 2009, Australia, New Zealand and ASEAN ministers signed the ASEAN-Australia-New Zealand Free Trade Agreement. ANSTA provides a platform for ongoing economic engagement with ASEAN through a range of built-in agendas, economic cooperation projects and business outreach activities. This is the most comprehensive free trade agreement that ASEAN has ever negotiated. It is also the first time they have entered on FTA ne negotiations covering all sectors such as goods, services, investment and intellectual property simultaneously. This FTA is of great importance to the countries in the ASEAN, Australia and New Zealand because it provides new opportunities through regional rules of origin for Australian exporters to tap into international supply chains in the Asia-Pacific region. The FTA again brings great opportunities to Australia by bringing in foreign skills and foreign investment, which not only can improve communication between Australia and ASEAN countries, but also between the ASEAN countries themselves. In turn of assisting countries all over the globe, the Australian government plays a great role in interacting with the world through aid. With the government's aid program, AusAid, it aims to advance our national interest by assisting developing nations to reduce poverty and achieve sustainable development. AusAid focuses on providing practical, well-targeted development assistance to the Asia-Pacific region. The Australian government strives to provide assistance rapidly to those in need as they try to make constant contributions to international relief agencies which have extensive experience in relief operations. AusAid not only provides emergency relief to countries in need as they also are in charge of the global education program. Global education allows teachers to provide education to the youth of developing countries. The Australian government's aid program tries their best to play their part in helping the world become a better place for the greatest future. Non-government organizations also play a great part in Australia's involvement in world aid. One of Australia's most well-known non-government organizations, the Australian Red Cross, works with the most vulnerable people and communities in Australia and internationally. The Australian Red Cross is a member of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, which aims to provide assistance without discrimination as to nationality, race, religious beliefs, or class. The IFRC works to provide emergency relief and combining this with development work to strengthen its member societies. Non-government organizations are important in relation to aid 
as it heals the communities in need, while at the same time bringing countries together in unity to help these developing countries. International aid cannot be effective with only the government's program, so that is why NGOs help with the healing process in communities in need. Australia has many other links with countries all over such as in sport. With sport, having many economic, cultural and geopolitical advantages, the economic advantages include people watching major sporting events may come to Australia as tourists, thus boosting income. Major sporting events such as the Olympic Games in 2000, the Australian Open which is held every year and the Melbourne Cup which is held in November. The same advantage brings an economic disadvantage as the preparation of these sporting events takes a toll on the Australian economy, becoming more expensive each year to impress and promote Australia to the world. The cultural advantages are that tourists which come to Australia may choose to migrate to Australia, thus bring their culture to make Australia making Australia even more multicultural. The geopolitical advantages are the trust and the relations between the countries which are participating in these events. As if many countries come to Australia for a renowned event, they will get a chance to improve their relations with Australia. Links such as sport relate with each other to provide advantages and disadvantages for the country. Tourism being another example. Tourism has many economic advantages. The economic advantages of tourism are obvious as when people come to the country, they will spend money in Australia, thus boosting the Australian economy. Recently, many Asian tourists have been coming to Australia as Australia is located close to many Asian countries such as China and Papua New Guinea. Tourism can be influenced by sporting events as discussed before as the world is being advertised Australia. Australia and the EU have sought to improve the international trade environment with regard to developing countries in the Asia Pacific and provide natural disaster relief as well as help the victims of poverty. Development cooperation between Australia and the EU in the Asia Pacific and negotiation from economic partnership agreements are considered critical for long-term development, economic growth and poverty reduction in the region. Australian aid agencies have achieved many of their goals with provision of social services and security reinforcement. Such issues include discrimination in the distribution of aid, forced relocations and sexual and gender-based violence, as well as claims of a lack of transparency in the way aid agencies operate. Equity issues have arisen from the emphasis put by aid agencies on economic growth over economic disparity and its social consequences. Aid agencies have attempted to resolve social problems with an emphasis put on the role of government and institution building. In the economic and cultural benefits include the long-term development of Australia's global links and the improvement of employment and investment opportunities for Australian businesses and of training opportunities. Assisting the poor living in underprivileged countries encourage private investment and trade opportunities and create stable social institutions as an avenue to sustainability in the long term. Regional security is an advantage for aid. Aid given to conflict resolution and poverty reduction is thought to result in fewer refugees fleeing their country and greater re regional security. Voluntary aid has been said to benefit young people seeking work experience and retirees and unemployed people seeking worthwhile work. Although aid has its benefits, political problems and equity will arise. Aid agencies present their goals in unrealistic ways that undermine their implementation and increase the vulnerability of the poor they seek to help. Another disadvantage for aid is the abuse of human rights. Discrimination in the distribution of aid will possibly result in regional economic and security weaknesses. The discussed economic and cultural disadvantages come from the inequitable distribution of aid, rights abuses, and government corruption that results from the over-reliance on aid income and the unrealistic nature of aid policies. Australia shares treaties and agreements with international bodies that reflect its government and non-government commitments to economic, social, and humanitarian aid. An example of an international treaty in relation to aid is AIPRD, 
which supports Indonesia's reconstruction and development efforts, both in and beyond areas affected by the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami. It was launched to address the Indian Ocean disaster, but also aims to assist broader efforts to raise living standards through sustainable development and economic growth. The priorities of Australia's partnership are health, education and local government services and rehabilitation assistance to other areas, natural disaster management and to the Government Part Partnerships Fund to support exchange of skills and expertise between the Australian and international governments. Because Australia is a growing nation, it faces difficult challenges on the road ahead, such as a gradual increase of population and its social standing on human rights issues and the reconciliation between other nations. Most of Australia's increase in population has occurred in the cities, especially the capitals. There has also been significant increase in the numbers of people moving to small urban centers along the coast. This has put a stress on resources in these areas. Due to this increase, the issue of human rights is evident not only in Australia borders, but its surrounding neighbours and the world. Governments are continuously fighting for the equality of each individual and how they should be respected. Although human rights is still an issue, over half the countries in the world have now abolished the death penalty in law or practice. Re-education is also used to ensure people to follow the government line. Reconciliation is a process of learning to understand a conflict from all sides and trying to find a resolution that values the differences. Over the course of history, nations have been divided by geographical location and conflicting beliefs. But since the development of technology, the world has become a global village that is interconnected through the world population and its problems. In order to address these issues, Nations must set aside their differences and work towards a more just society. This document is only a small example of Australia's overall involvement and interaction with the world. Australia is interacting frequently with neighbour nations to help create a global future for ourselves and a positive future for the world. Signing out.